Replacing the cell sign certificates on a Citrix license server can be a bit of a chore. What you have to do is request the certificate, export the certificate, including the private key, and then use OpenSSL.exe to convert it into really two separate files, a certificate file and a private key file. You then take those certificate and private key files and copy them into two separate directories in the Citrix licensing uh, hierarchy. And then after doing that, you have to restart the Citrix licensing service as well as the Citrix web services for licensing service. And the certificates will then be kind of picked up and you've managed to hopefully successfully replace your self science certificate. So just to demonstrate how this goes when you do it manually, it's a bit of a pain. First thing you have to do is open up an MMC console and add the certificate snap in. So we'll go to certificates for this user account and click next, finish and okay. And then we expand out the certificates for the local computer and open the personal certificates. And this is where you would actually request a certificate if you don't already have one, but we've already made one. And then you have to export it. So you can right click it, go to all tasks and export and it will open the export wizard. So you click next, say yes, you do want to export the private key Click next, you can leave the defaults here. So you click next again, and then you have to specify a password. So we'll specify a password and click next. Browse to where you want to save the key. So we could save it right here, but I've already actually exported it, so we don't need to. But you save it somewhere and make a note of where you've actually saved that .pfx file. So we'll cancel out of all this though, because we've already got that. So having exported, the PFX file with the private key. Now we have to convert it into a format that the Apache web server uh, that the license server is based on actually understands. And to do that, we have to use the openssl.exe binary. So you can either download that or you can use the binary that comes with the license server. And that's located under C, uh, program files, x86, Citrix licensing, uh, let's see, oof. Web services for licensing, Apache bin, openssl.exe. So that is where the openssl.exe file is. Uh, that's the executable. Now we have to provide it with arguments. So we'll say pkcs12, we specify the input file as whatever we just exported. So sbr.pfx, we want to specify an output file of server, Dot CRT. This is the first of two output files that we're going to make. And we are going to say no keys. So dash no keys. Press enter. Enter the password. And Mac verified OK indicates that it was successfully exported. Then you have to take the same command by pressing the up arrow and kind of convert it to export the private key this time instead of the certificate. So same input file here. But what we want to say is the output is server.key and then we want to say no certs and dash no DES, no data encryption standard. Press enter, specify the password, and we've managed to output it. Now, if we do a listing of the directory here, we've got our server.crt and our server.key. Next step you have to do is take those two files. We'll open it up here, server key and server.certificate, copy those, and then browse to C, program files x86, Citrix, licensing. Uh, first go to ls and conf, and then you have to take your existing server.crt and server.key and put them in a folder somewhere. So we've already got a backup folder. We could drag those in, and we have to paste, uh, we'll replace the files and we have to paste the new files in. And then you would go over to, you go up a few directories, back to web services for licensing, uh, Apache conf, and you have to do basically the same thing in conf, right? Move the server.key and server.crt to a backup directory and then paste the new ones in. So after doing that, you then have to restart the services for those changes to take effect. So you press the Windows key, for instance, and you can type services, Press enter, and then you have to restart two services. Citrix licensing, so we'll restart that. And then once that's done, we have to restart Citrix um, 
web services for licensing right here. So we'll restart that. And once that's done, you have successfully managed to replace the self-signed certificate that's gonna throw a lot of browser errors with a trusted certificate uh, that was provided from Active Directory Certificate Services. So it's kind of an involved process to actually replace the certificates on the license server. And what I've made is a little script to automate things for you. So I wanna demonstrate the use of that as well. So you can download this from the Stormwind GitHub page. And the way to use it is to, well, first download it, and you can see it right here on the desktop. Then you have to navigate to it. You need an administrative uh, command prompt or PowerShell session. And if you open a command prompt, just type PowerShell to get into PowerShell, because really PowerShell is required here. And then you can CD uh, change directories to your the location that you've downloaded this to. So this is where we've actually downloaded this uh, script to. So I'm gonna uh, clear the screen really quickly. And if you just do a dir, there's, there's really two files that come with this. There's the lscertinstaller.ps1. So that's the script that's going to go through all the, what we just demonstrated actually. And then there's openssl.zip, and that's just a zip file with the openssl binary and its dependencies all contained in one place. So you don't have to like, use that really long path to use the openssl executable that comes with the license server. So the way to run this is to just do dot slash ls cert installer and press enter. And it will find, it will first check the existence of the appropriate directories. It will decompress the OpenSSL zip. And then you can press enter to select the certificate. So you already have to have it exported, but once you've exported it, you can select the certificate and click open. And it will, uh, you have to enter the password, of course, for the PFX file that you specified during the export. Press enter. It will extract the files. It will back up the pre-existing keys automatically to the directory with the script in it. And then it will move the new keys to those two directories that we demonstrated. It will restart the Citrix licensing service as well as the Citrix web services for licensing service. And then once it's restarted them, it will attempt to browse to any ports that are bound to the licensing service. Uh, it will actually attempt to make an HTTP connection to them and uh, verify that they're up and running. So notice that one of these two ports didn't work because you, you can't browse to that over HTTPS, but the other one did, which indicates that everything's working fine. And it will also kind of clean up a little bit after itself. For instance, it will delete the extracted OpenSSL files that came with that zip once it's kind of successfully done everything. So it has now done that automatically. It kind of reduces a little bit of the headache and manual copying and the long openssl.exe command that you have to use. So hopefully this is something that's uh, useful for you. And once again, this is available over under on our GitHub page under automation scripts, license server, server certificate installer, and you just download the LS cert installer as well as the zip and keep them in the same folder. So the way this works, there's lots of functions. It actually it does a lot of logic behind the scenes to, to work. But at the end of the day, it just checks the existence of the appropriate directories the, that we would paste those certificate and key files into. It decompresses the OpenSSL file. It allows you to select the PFX file that you've exported, ask for a password, and then it backs up the certificates, moves the new certificates to the directories, restarts the services, and then finally does a little bit of a network connection test down here uh, to just verify that everything's up and running. So hopefully it's something that might be useful for you, save you a little bit of headache, and uh, reduce the chance of typos and errors and frustration. So thanks for joining me, and once again, I hope that's helpful.